Hey, Tarot Sphere, it's Holly from Cape Guide Creatures, and I am here tonight with a comparison of the indie and mass-produced version of Flowers of the Night Oracle. Um, for those of you not familiar, this is an Oracle deck put out by either Sherilyn Darcy, the artist herself, or if you're doing the mass-produced one, uh, Rockpool Publishing, still by Sherilyn Darcy. Um, a little bit of controversy surrounding the original release of Flowers of the Night. I'm still not 100% sure of what exactly went down there, um, but I did receive my copy with no hiccups. So anyway, um, it, was a, it was kind of a weird experience, but um, I have it and I like the deck and we're just going to go ahead and compare apples to different brand of apples, I suppose. Okay, so first things first, the boxes are completely different. Hi, Deshan, how are you? Thank you. It's purple. It doesn't show up purple here, but um, I know it's so bright, isn't it? It doesn't show up purple on camera for whatever reason, but it's purple, I promise. So anyway, um, the uh, Flowers of the Night by Sherilyn Darcy uh, came in this awesome, this cute little... Uh, two piece, um, you know, like clamshell box, I guess they're called. And it came with a really cute little book. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with and have any of our other works. Hey, Tiff, how are you? What are you still doing up? Go to bed. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, it came with an instruction book. This was a, so this is all self published, by the way, you guys. Um, one of my first experiences with an indie deck, by the way. Um, and then the cards themselves, these would be they, um, you know, decent stock, a little thick, but not too, too bad. Um, and then we have the rock pool version. So when I heard rock pool was going to come out with a mass, like a mass printed version, I was really excited because normally rock pool, and then I have Sherilyn's other two, um, her two other decks, rock pool usually comes with like a, a like a cool little magnetic box it's like printed on the inside it's got a really substantial uh book that comes with and then these are the cards themselves they're the same size as same or same size or at least comparable to yeah same size as pretty much the um cards that were indie printed so i was really excited and i mean this little some people throw this white thing away i like to keep them i don't know why um but so I was really excited to hear that they were coming out with Flowers of the Night because then I could have, you know, the whole set because I've got her Australian and then I've got this, the Australian flowers, the regular flowers, and then I could have the night flowers. Um, and then what happened, what wound up coming was, I'm just going to put that book back so I don't forget. This is the uh, box that they released. This is the indie version. This is the mass produced version so I was a little like, what? Like needle scratch. Oh my goodness. Um, so yes, 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 yes. This is, this is just, yes. Um, so that was a bit of a letdown. Uh, the cards themselves are actually smaller than the normal rock pool size that I'm used to. Same card stock, which is really nice. Um, and the guidebook is significantly smaller because it's got to fit inside the box. So that's really sad. Um, yeah, the smaller is the mass produced. So this is a mass produced deck by Rockpool Publishing. And then this is also a mass produced deck by Rockpool Publishing. So they changed their packaging up and their presentation and the size of the decks, I guess. I just, but I paid like, I think I paid like 18, 20 bucks for this one. And I also paid like 18 for this one. So I'm not a happy camper. Um, as far as rock pool is concerned, the deck itself is still really cute. So anyway, the inside, this is the mass produced deck, the inside of the, I do like the inside finish on the, on the box. Um, so it's a green finish. It's not too bad. The, de the book and the decks fit nice and snugly in. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, taking out an inside liner. The cards are smaller, which is really, so this is the flower reading card. Let me pull out the flower reading cards again. Sorry, you guys. So this is the flower reading cards, right? Really adorable. And then this is the flowers of the night by Rockpool. So the cards, again, they're smaller for the mass produced. 
Um, normally they go the opposite way. Normally, if you're going to get, if you have a deck mass produced, you get a larger card, which is nice. Why am I putting that in there? That's going to go in there. I'm putting it back all wrong, you guys. Oh, no. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, without further ado, um, the cards. So, the guidebooks are a little different. So, the thing that's really nice about the Rockpool books is that it expands on Sherilyn's meanings and it gives you some information about the flower itself. In Sherilyn's original book, she gives you a whole bunch of info, but she doesn't tell you much about the flower, which meant that you had to go and do your own research on it and not for nothing, but there is like piles of botany, everything out there. In this little guidebook, they do give you information about the flower. So you get, so the, the compare the picture is smaller, but underneath it, you get like a, this is what the flower is. And then you get, the description. And as far as I can tell, I haven't gone through the whole guide um, because this one, Sherilyn's book is, um, it is done by uh, alphabetically by flower. And this is done alphabetically by keyword. So there's a bit of juggling to compare each entry. Um, as far as I can tell, nothing's really changed there. Um, there's one significant change between the two decks and we'll get to that um, in a little bit. But anyway, um, these are the cards themselves. Like I said, the mass produced is going to be smaller. Um, it's hard to tell on camera, but the black is a little blacker on this one. As far as the back is concerned, actually you can tell a little bit. It's actually a different tint of black. This is like a blue black. This is more like a grayish black, I suppose. And, um, yeah, the, you're not gonna be able to tell in the first card I'm going to show you, but her style of art is woodblock printing, and there isn't as much detail in the mass-produced one. They totally touched these up a little bit. Um, so here we have the first card is Angel's Trumpet. It's a fruit bat and an Angel's Trumpet flower, which is really adorable. Um, actually, you might be able to tell down here, these aren't scratches. This is actually part of the um, artwork, part of the lino cut or, or, or woodblock cut. Um, you can actually, um, like, you know, sometimes you wind up with some carby spots. It gives the artwork a little bit more character. And if you can see on the bottom there, they just totally touch that up. There, there's no, I don't know, it just, it, it lacks the character of the original deck, I think. Um, so this would be the Angel's Trumpet. And then we've got, um, oh, and the color's a little bit different. You'll probably be able to tell better on this one. Um, so yeah, see, see all the like stuff in the background. It's like kind of like, the white flaky stuff, that's on purpose. That's not scratches in the cards, it's the artwork itself. And then on this little guy, they've touched most of it up. And the color is actually, like they turned up the contrast on these cards. And then, you know, they, the, her colors are obviously a little more true to the artwork, I would suppose. Um, the other thing that I don't know, think, well, you might notice, but on here, and there are a few more, there are a few cards where actually, you know, the next card, I'll, I'll point that out on the next card. But, um, oh, and you can see they put the, uh, the name of the flower on the bottom here and the name of the flowers on top there. So it's Bella de la Nui and it's pleasure and it's same thing. It's just reversed a little bit. So there's a few like little insee changes. One of the things that I like about the original is you've got kind of like a watermark going across so you can read the name of the flower, but you can still see the artwork behind it and along the bottom. In the new deck, they've faded it. It's a fade out. You can't see the bottom of the artwork or anything going on behind the name. So you're actually missing like a huge chunk of the flower, which is really sad. Um, one thing that I did like about this though, is you got a little more of the butterfly tail. They like they worked on recentering the art and kind of trying to fit everything in there, which I appreciate, but... Mm. I mean, each each deck has its ups and downs. Um, this is the um, celebration card, which is Casablanca Lily. Uh, then you have Achievement, which is Chago. You've got, all right, so um, Chilean Jasmine is Freedom. It's a sloth. Gotta love a sloth, man. Then you've got the, um, all right, so this, no, this, there's one that she re, there's one that was renamed and we're coming up on it. Yeah, the bigger cards are a little bit better. Um, 
I actually bought two sets of the first edition and I'm glad that I did because I can still use one and then I can have one in collector's um, condition to either keep or sell. So, da, da. Oh, this is, so these, this one was renamed. So I don't know what went on here. Um, well, she calls it Comet Orchid. And then this one calls it um, Darwin's Orchid. So I'm wondering, I'm going to have to Google that or read the entries and see which one, um, which one is the correct name for this flower. Like, I wonder if she put Comet Orchid in her, Comet Orchid in her notes because there's a comet in an orchid and then just forgot to rename it. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. P thank you, Pixie Dust. Um, I was supposed to go off Cape for a little bit today uh, to Lush to go get some ocean salt soap because I need it. And uh, I thought it would be an excuse to play with some makeup. And then uh, that whole plan petered out. Um, so yeah, you've got the Damask Violet. This is the, okay. And then this is the card that's the artwork for, um, the artwork on the box is different. So this is the um, mass, this is the mass produced artwork. And then we've got the, um, yeah, like, see, you lose a whole bunch of detail in the bunny. Like, this bunny is, like, this bunny is a creeper, and this bunny's adorable. I don't know what's going on there, creeper bunny, but, like, this bunny's, like, soon. Like, I don't know, like, it's just really, like, I feel like he's watching me shower. And then this bunny is just kind of, like, being adorable and wants to snuggle. See, this bunny is going to get further in life, Creeper Bunny. This is like a Norman Bates bunny. I don't even, can't even make that right now. And then you've got um, the Petunia. No, is it? No, it's not Petunia. I'm sorry. Desert Wishbone with the Lynx or the Bobcat. It's not blue, Wild Feather. It's purple. For whatever reason, the coloring on the... Um, the coloring on the screen is making it look blue, but I promise it's purple. Um, and then we've got the, um, this is another fun one, another one with a bat on it. This is the dragon fruit. This is the um, evening primrose. This is the evening star. I think Evening Star is one of the rare um, cards where I think I do almost like the um, mass-produced card a little bit more in this deck. I don't know, for some whatever reason, I just think the Hummingbird Moth needed a little more vibrancy in there. Oh, and that's the other thing. You get information about the animals, too. Um, in the, in the mass-produced deck, you get a little info about the animals, too. This is the Evening Stock. This is the, you have the same problem when you photograph wool. Oh no. Yeah, for whatever, sometimes like the the really deep, the really deep purples come across as like really blue blues. Um, but it's purple and I went darker so that way. Um, yeah, and this one, like I much prefer this card because you get way more detail in the owl. And this is the four o'clock flower. I, I do almost enjoy this one a little bit more, though. I think the darker red suits the moon a little bit, but the orange is cute, too. And then um, Japanese honeysuckle. Wisteria. Or the Japanese wisteria. Uh, Lady of the Night. Really hard to see it, but there's really faint... So this is one where um, the contrast being turned up helps to, helps to make out the different colors in the card. There's actually faint yellows and um, violets in here. <coughs> and it's a little harder to see on this card. But you get more detail in the bird on this card. I don't know. Like, it's just totally silly, I'm sure. But here's the moonflower. This is the uh, night blooming cirrus or Sirius. 
Sirius, Sirius, Sirius. Um, and then this is, let's see. Oh, how do I store my decks? I just have a bunch of shelving underneath the table. I used to have shelving up there, but it got so heavy. One of the shelves was actually pulling away from the wall a little bit. So we've, I put decks in use up here so that way I can grab them easily. And then all of my decks sit, I've got like three of those like, um, chrome metal, chrome steel, like kitchen racks underneath there. And they all kind of sit there for now. Eventually what I would love, um, we have to get the house resided. So I think while we have the dudes working on the house and we have to take out that ginormous loan to get new siding and we need a new deck too. Like our deck is seriously rotting off the house. But um, while we take out that loan to do that, we'll just tack on a little bit more and I'm gonna get some um, custom bookshelves put in in the living room and, we'll, and I'll be able to put my decks out there. Uh, this is a fun one for me, the flocks. You see a little hyena in the background. Um, let's see. You love Lily. Oh, you have a Lily tattoo on your rib cage. That's kind of cool. I'd love to be able to get a rib cage tattoo, but I'm also a fat kid and that just, it wouldn't, mm -mm. <laughs> I know better than to put a tattoo in a place where it's not going to be flattering. Um, oh, this is the petunia. One of my favorite cards. I love petunias. They're such good. They're such good flowers. And then this is the port wine magnolia. I actually have a star magnolia in my front yard. And then we've got the um, queen of the night. I like how there's a snake in this one. A sneaky snake. A little snicky McSnake snake. Um, let's see. And then we've got the um, rain lily. We're almost done, you guys. The um, red flare water lily. This is the Rose of Mexico for strength. The Royal Lily for devotion. A little jaguar in there. And the, oh, this is one of my favorites. The Sea Moon Flower with the Death's Head Moth. And then this is one of those. I like the woodcut better, but I like that we get even more of the moth in this one. Just some, like, it just seems like the art, like the actual artwork was bigger and then parts of it get, got cut off to make the, um, to actually make it the deck, which makes me a little bit sad. And then this is the um, Silver Ghost. It reminds me a bit of like a dan of dandelion greens. It makes me want a salad. And then we've got the spiny star for influence. We've got the tuberose. And uh, wolf's evening primrose with a wolf. And again, really like this one a little bit better. You get more detail in the wolf here and more detail in the flower. And the, um, the depth card is Woodland Tobacco. All right. So those are all the same cards. Now, each deck does have its own. Um, there was one card change in the deck between, between versions of the deck. And um, each card is exclusive to each version, which is kind of cool. I mean, so if you have one, like you have a reason to get the other, I kind of wish there was like extra cards or extra cards or a few different between each version would have been really nice just to kind of make it like that much different. Um, but in the original, you have the Dutchman's pipe cactus for cleansing. And hi, how are you? How are you, Leona? How are you? Um, and then 
in the mass produced version, you have the devil's trumpet, which I believe partners with the angel's trumpet. And this is a death card. So that's interesting that you have cleansing on one and you have death on the other. Um, and I don't know, I'll, I'll take more fruit bat any, any way I can get the fruit bat. I do love a fruit bat, but um, I don't know. I just kind of wish that both were in the deck. So I was just like, okay, so these are the cards that are exclusive to each version. Um, you're not going to find this one in the mass produced and you're not going to find this one in the indie deck. Um, but yeah, so that's the big difference between the two, between the two versions. Um, and the book, like I said, the information is mostly the same as far as meaning and keywords are concerned. Um, but you do get more information on the actual flowers in this little mass produced one. And I believe, yeah, you get, I said animal information too. Yep. Yep. You get, so like for this one, you've got about the flower and then you've got about the bushtail possum. And then, um, you have all about your keywords and yeah, that is pretty much the difference between the two decks. I do like, I, I like them both. Um, the reason I got this one was to keep my first editions pristine, but where, I don't know. I just, I really kind of enjoy the first edition, like a little pinchy pinch more. Um, that being said, there was some contract for, so for those who, um, <gasps> did you get the Santa Morte deck? I got the Santa Morte deck too. Mm. I tried, <laughs> I tried to, um, oh, this one shuffle, it shuffles very nicely by the way, you guys, it's a little stiff because I haven't used it. So as far as shuffling is concerned, this one's much easier to handle. It's much easier in the hand than the first edition. Like this one is a stretch, even for my meaty man hands. And this one, like I can get my hands around no problem. Um, and the cardstock on this is a little bit stiffer than this. Um, yeah, the, the, um, oh, what was it? Deck lust, that's what it's called. Yeah, deck lust struggle is real. Like I just, I can't. I said, you know what? The, I got it. I got the um, what was it that I ordered the other day? Oh, the Black and the Moon. She had a few copies of her um, first edition Oracle of Oddities reprint up on eBay, and I said I would never buy another Black and the Moon deck because they're just way too expensive. But it was like discounted because she only had a handful left. I guess she just wanted to get rid of them. So I snagged it for, um, plus with the shipping, I think I snagged it for like $40 us, which is good because normally they're like 60 bucks US. but her decks are like way too expensive for their own good. So Santa Morte, I haven't really, uh, worked with yet. Pixie, have you started working with it? Um, <sighs> I kind of want to, oh my God, does Jennifer have the uh, limited edition Santa Morte, the coffin box? Oh my God. I don't know if I regret getting the coffin box or not, because honestly, like the regular box is just fine. It's really nice. And I feel like the coffin box, I would somehow manage to mess up. Like I would somehow fuck it up somehow. Like I would ruin it. Um, anyway, we're going to do a couple of readings with the, um, with the mass print, uh, it's easy as the queen. That's, well, that's not a bad thing to be seen as. I just really, I want to research working with, um, I'm starting to get into working with deities and stuff like that. And I really want to know more about the culture behind the deck before I start working with it. Um, that's, that is something that I do like to do. Um, I like to learn about the thing that actually goes with the deck because I always love learning. Right. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to do a few readings, by the way, guys, if you have any questions, put them in. Um, otherwise I'm just going to do a rando poll for us all. Um, I like to know more about the culture of the deck, especially if I'm getting a cultural based deck like that. Um, it just, it makes me feel better. I guess it assuages my con my conscience. Um, because I don't know, because these is the times we live in. I think, you know, Holly circa 2003 would totally just be like, Psh, whatever. But I think, um, will you and your fiance ever have a baby? Um, that is, so I don't read tarot predictively pixie. Um, 
I can tell you whether or not it's a good idea to have a baby right now or a baby in the future. Um, let's see. But yeah. Oh, thank you, Miss Tracy. How are you? I saw you. There's a few. I think you have a few comments and I haven't commented back yet, but I'm getting to it. I promise. Um, all right. So pixie dust. We're talking about babies. Got to make the baby first. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and take a poll about babies. Um, how about we do card for baby now? Card for baby later. All right. Hmm. So you got awareness and compassion. This would be card for baby now, and this would be card for baby later. Um, awareness kind of sticks out to me. Like, well, it's a moonflower, and it's adorable, and it's a vine, and you've got like a bunch of people behind you and whatnot. Um, I don't know. I think awareness as far as like card for baby now would probably be like, have you done all your baby research? <laughs> you have to really maybe take a look at where you are in your life right now and decide whether or not you still have some personal and personal and relationship work to do. Um, you know, the kind of take the temperature of whether or not it's the right time to have a baby now. Um, and then card for baby later would be, by the way, if you don't have two babies and name them now and later, I'm going to be really mad at you because it's such a good candy. I don't care what anyone says. Um, <laughs> so card for baby later uh, would be compassion. And I think that that's just, you need that when raising a child anyway. But um, I don't know. That strikes me as just something... I just think you'll be, I think you'll be a little more ready if you hold off. I mean, just where this is kind of like, this is a very busy, noisy card and it just seems to be taking like, you know, but it seems like you'd be like shoehorning a baby into this whole scene kind of like, all right, let's go ahead and like, okay, we've got a bunch of people and a lot of things that I want to do and I'm still discovering and like, oh my God, I'm still like, you know, like still trying to get some stuff accomplished and then like, Oh, but also baby, let's throw that into the mix. Oh, that's such a good time. Right. I think this one where this card's a bit more subdued and you've got the two moths and they're kind of like, all right, let's focus on us and let's like start working on this. Like, it just seems to me like they're more ready to kind of like, it's a calmer see, like if that makes any sense, it's like, it's okay. Well now it's time. Like, I, I just think that you'll know, I just think that you'll know better. Um, when it's time. I just don't think right now would be it. So that was a fun reading. Um, oh God. Yeah. You're only, you guys are young. You guys are young. Wait, give it a few years. Like <laughs> just, yeah. And yeah. And you're only fiance. We get married. We do the baby thing, get married. <laughs> like that's that's the only thing I can say. Actually, Tiff will weigh in. Tiff, if you're still awake, we're gonna do the baby thing. You get married first, right? Um. So uh, let's see. Holy cannoli! No wonder that other card was so busy. Damn, girl. Yeah, I mean, you can, if I were you, I'd wait, especially where he's a little younger. He's got time. You've got time. And I don't know, it just, it seemed like that, like I said, that first card just seemed so busy, like just, just noisy, if that makes any sense. Just kind of like, Meep. just wait. You'll know. Wait, don't shoehorn it in. Um, <laughs> so, yes, does anybody else have, um, Anybody else want a reading or have a question? Oh, Santa Muerte. Yeah, I want to I wanna read about um, Santa Muerte and how to safely work with Santa Muerte before I go be an all. Hey, skeleton face bitch. Let's read some fortunes um, because that is probably not respectful and where there is so much controversy surrounding working with Santa Muerte. Um, 
not I'm not going to say not safe, but I don't want to in, invite something into my life that I don't know how to properly respect or and I don't want to say control either, but I want to be in the driver's seat where that's concerned, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, it's just that just doesn't seem like a good idea. You know, it's just like, oh, let's work with this saint that is like, you know, the embodiment of death. There's no way this could possibly go wrong. I can see any way this could backfire. <laughs> um, oh, the Zerkus Magi. Um, is that what's that circus magic that's a that's a circus one isn't it mm, you can keep your circus ones the only circus one i think i own is the um 78 tarot carnival circus has creeped me out i don't know why i'm not even a fan of the cards where it's just like hey um yep exactly jennifer and I don't know enough. I'm willing to admit I don't know enough. I admire, I admire the artwork and I didn't want to, and like, honestly, I was like watching the price on Amazon for the deck and it went down and I went absolutely like, I totally like, I'm going to grab this while I can afford it. Um, but I don't want to go ahead and like crack it open and use it disrespectfully and, um, you know, not know about not know enough about the culture with which I'm working to perform readings in a respectful way, if that makes any sense. So anyway, um, I don't know. So yeah, that's just, that's just how I personally feel about it. Some people were comfortable working with it right away. Like it's fine, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to like, I'm trying to make everyone happy. Damn it. Um, <laughs> But anyway, yes, anybody else have any questions they want for this little guy? Because if not, I'm going to do one last draw for us. And then I'm going to go to sleep. Let's see. I don't know why I was doing that little dance. That was weird. I apologize in advance for my white girl dancing. Um, something about who said pretty deck. Oh, Missy. Missy, I didn't even see you sneak in there. Oh, my goodness. How are you? Let's see. Yes, you can have one more question. Um, anybody else have a question? But yes, absolutely, P Pixie. You can have one more question if you want. Um, all right. So we'll do. You know what? We'll do Kim, and then Pixie. We'll do you. Pixie, you put your question down, and then we'll do you one more question. Um, I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Um, to Missy's Enchanted Channel. Missy, you make your channel sound like it is like the best place to hang up. It is a good channel, don't get me wrong, but it's like Missy's Enchanted Channel. And I want it to have unicorns and rainbows and glitter and <laughs> like all sorts of, like I want it to basically be Ella Enchanted, but on YouTube, which would be amazing. Um, thank you, Kim. All right, so we'll do uh, Kim Nash's uh, you want to look for another job would now be a good time or how about, how about something to keep in mind while you perform a job search because, Oh, you know what? This one just popped out, but I don't feel like it was a normally I get a feel for if it means something, if it pops out. Um, how about something to keep in mind while you perform a job search because it is always it, it is always a good idea. Like if you have a feel like, Oh, I think I should start looking for another job. Um, that doesn't mean like quit your job, but if you're kind of getting the stirrings, it's always a good idea. Like professionally anyway, tarot aside, if you're kind of like, mm, maybe I should look for another job, you want to start looking immediately just so you can get a feel for what's out there. So you can make an informed decision about whether or not you truly can leave your job in a smart way, if that makes any sense. Like if you are like, mm, maybe I should start looking for a new job and then you quit your job impulsively, but you haven't actually put some feelers out and it turns out nobody wants to hire you for the thing that you do because there's no jobs in that market. That was a dumb decision. <laughs> um, but yes, how about some stuff to keep in mind while you look for another job? I think would be a better, would be a better, um, a better thingy. Well, yeah, I know, but I just like to give, I just like to give, I'm much older than I look apparently. Um, people are telling me that I look very young lately, which I will take 
just trick of the light, honestly, because it feels so old. Um, but that's my 35 year old. I've been a block, I've been around the block once or twice advice for you, but let's see. Do, 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 do. All right. I want that one for you. Acceptance. Um, that's an interesting card to get for like the beginning of a job search. Um, so I think when we start having, um, you know, like the, I don't like my job. I want to leave my job, you know, doing, doing this is like soul crushing and I hate it. And it's like absolutely the worst, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm 35 and I'm feeling every single fucking year. Look, this is like, so this is like trick of the light. And then this is how I usually look. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm basically Ursula and I just put on good makeup. So, <laughs> so acceptance for when it as applies to a job for back to Kim's, back to Kim's question where we're not focusing anymore. Um, I think you have to accept the realities of work versus work versus divine life purpose versus stuff that makes you happy. Um, they wouldn't call it work if it was fun all the time. So I think you just have to kind of like think about the reality of your situation. You have to think about like what your living expenses are. You have to think about, um, Tracy, I can see your chat. So Tracy, yep. I can see your chat. Was there something that I missed? I see some hearts and then something that says, thanks, Jen. Oh, I forgot Tracy. Oh, Tracy, you had a question. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. Okay, Tracy, retype your question and then I'll read for you. So yeah, I mean, you have to think about, you know, you've got finances and all that good stuff to think about. Um, I think you just have to have a general acceptance that there is a difference between, and actually this was something that I just have been doing some meditating on. Um, you know, there's a difference between divine life purpose and the stuff that lights a fire under your soul. And then there's a difference between that and career. Sometimes in a perfect life, the two will merge. And I think maybe you have to think about whether or not, um, you know, can you accept, a, like, I think this is like, can you accept the compromises that are going to come with finding a job that you truly love that merges both of those things? Or are you willing to, um, you know, do one, do like have a career that pays the bills and gives you enough money to feel fulfilled in the other, if that makes sense for you. So I think it's just, it's um, an acceptance of the reality of the situation and then work either working to change it or figuring out, I just, it's like this, this feels like a card of brainstorming to me. Um, if that makes any sense, like you've got the worker bee and then like the ideally, ideally this flower would already be honey and his job would be done. <laughs> like, like, you know, that's kind of, but no, no, like he's, this bee lives for honey, but he collects pollen. Like that's, you know, like, I think you need to just kind of be like, okay, like what's going on here? Like do it. How do I balance it? If that makes any sense for you. And then eventually I think there is a way to merge the two like to kind of make a career out of, but there might be some sacrifices that you have to make and then you have to decide whether or not you're willing to accept those. So that is something to keep in mind while you perform your new job search. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see. Do, do. All right. So the job you have is, yeah. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of, um, if that's the case, then I mean, you have to, you know, you have to accept that maybe, you know, cutting back I, a lot of people have a hard time cutting back. So there was, what was, there was a saying when I was, when I was younger, um, I forget what it was, but it's something like it, the gist of it was, it's like, no matter how much money you make, you'll always live paycheck to paycheck because you um, your spending habits and lifestyle adjust to the new money coming in. Like, it's not just like, okay, yeah, it's like the cost of living rises, but on, on like, ideally if you're doing correctly, you're making 
feel like you're advocating for yourself and you're getting new jobs and you're gaining experience and you're getting more um, responsibility. So as you climb the job ladder, your salary goes up. But for some reason, like if you have money in your pocket, you're going to spend it. Like you're going to figure out a way to spend it. So I think that you just have to find a way to scale back and accept those lifestyle changes in order to find a career that fulfills you a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It sounds, it sounds silly. And then I think when you, like you also, I think another thing to keep in mind too, like a change in job is really fun for a while, but if you're not taking care of the underlying cause, that's like, okay, your job is soul sucking and you're unhappy. It might not be just your job. Like it might just be like the nature of work itself. Like a new job is really fun when you get to it for like a year and then you'd find yourself like bored as shit again. That's my problem. Actually. I have that problem chronically. I'm good in any career for three years and then I just become really bored and it's soul sucking. Um, so I just think acceptance of, yeah, uh, I'm rambling now. I'm a little tired. I'm sorry, Kim. All right. So Miss Tracy, um, what is your question? Where were we? Where is Tracy's question? A question about your love life? Doo -doo. Oh yeah, working for a corporation can be kind of awful. So let's see. I'm trying to find your original question, Tracy. Uh, nah, nah, nah. Oh, oh, there you go. You just said yes, me. Okay, so Tracy, what's your question, love? So question about your love life. I can't read about your question. Like, I can pull a card for your love life in general, but oh, Missy, are you going? Bye. All right. So what's your question? What about your love life? Question for ending your love life. Question for starting your love life. Question for your love life next Tuesday. Question for your... Um, Point me in a direction, Tracy. I like to be, I like to be a cardomancy scalpel, not a cardomancy shotgun. Um, <laughs> let's see. And then I think it's non-existent. Oh, uh, do you want a question about how to do you like do you wanna like how to kickstart it? How to so your love life is non-existent. How about what is one thing I know sometimes you are better off. That is a 100% true story. So how about, here's a question. If it's, if you are, how about what is something that you can focus on working on in order to um, open yourself up to accept more romance into your life. Um, you know, how, how do we like, what's the thing that you, because you want to put the power, you want to put the power back in your hands a, a lot. Like, don't get fatalist about it. Like, Oh my God, my love life's not existent. Nobody's out there for me. Oh. Yeah. So let's go ahead and find out something that you can focus on and work on in order to start getting you to open back up to it. A lot of times we close ourselves off and then we're just like, my love life's not existent. But it's like, well, yeah, you're sitting in your house wearing sweatpants, being like putting on your resting bitch face. Like, and you don't like, you're not putting yourself out there. Like, come on, come on now. Not that that's what you're doing, but you know, that's no, that's a lot of times that's what I see. And like my friend, like, you know, you have friends that are all like, I'm not dating anyone. It's like, well, have you left the couch? in the past three months. Nope. But anyway, all right. So here is your card, Miss Tracy, too. Um, what a good one. <laughs> this deck is giving you the business. Um, so there was a dude and then he vanished. And there's, I like how there's a comet in this one. So this is the Darwin's orchid slash the comet orchid. Um, and the, and the name is chance. I think like you just have to keep, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a game of chance. It's a numbers game. You got to meet a lot of dicks.
before you find somebody that's totally worth it, right? So I think you just have to put yourself out there and I don't know, just, just, you know, just get in the habit of being like, I don't know, just it's chance. It's chance. You got to take chances. I don't know. Does it, like, this is just, I want to consult the book for this one a little bit. Is that bad? Let's see. P O H C C. I'm really bad at the alphabet tonight too. Trust in the cycles and rhythms of life. This could be an ending, but also a beginning. If you find yourself stagnant, perhaps you need to turn the wheel again of letting go or unblocking what is holding you back. Chance comes to those playing the game who are open to all possibilities, who trust that they deserve to win. Perhaps there is a bigger need to change your tactics, to withdraw a little and to see the bigger picture. From this viewpoint, new possibilities should be clear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's basically like, okay, so there was a guy, he disappeared, a new guy will come along and you just have to like, just be ready and open for that, like for that to come along. I mean, you know, you just gotta, and then you have to take that chance and put yourself out there. So don't, yeah, don't, I mean, you're going to get open heart, open mind. Don't be so picky. <laughs> did Jennifer just tell you to not who, oh, did Kim, Kim just said, don't get picky. <laughs> you get pickier as you get older, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you've kind of whittled down like, okay, like I could see an asshole coming from a mile away, but I think we tend to overlook Lots of people were like, oh, we don't like that goatee. Like, well, guess what? You can talk them into shaving it. Like, that's, I don't know. I think it's just, you know, be open to chance. And again, oh, yeah, it is new moon. <gasps> Poop, I forgot to make moon water. I'll set intentions tonight, though. Mm. I'm trying not to be really sad about that. I have not seen the dudes there, but have you seen the dudes here? I live, okay, so Cape Cod is about like this big and it's a really small town. Like it's small town, like it's as small town as it gets. So I promise you. Oh, and most of the guy, like most of the guys here have some sort of like drug addiction issue. Um, I promise you it's gross here. Plus they're all like, they're all like, dude, Jay, call the aquarium. It's a baby wheel kid. It's a shock. I think it's sick. It's dying, dude. Like that me that that video of the guy when he sees a sunfish. Dude, what is that, Jay? Um, that's real. Like <laughs> that's real. They're like that here. <laughs> oh my god. Cali boys are not what you'd expect. Oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, Jen? Is that a good thing or a bad thing that the Cali boys are not what you'd expect? I didn't, I see, I would expect them to be well-groomed. Are you telling me that they're not? Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm putting this away, you guys, because it is time for me to go to bed. I'm starting to not be able to think straight. And now I've got, dude, it's a baby wheel kid. Wheel is whale. Wheel is, wheel is Cape Cod for whale. It's baby wheel kid. Um, if you haven't seen it, you really need to look it up. It's so good. But yeah, no, I know, Miss Tracy, when you're in a smaller area, I, I'm assuming you're in a smaller area. That's usually, it's like, have you seen the men here? Like, it usually comes with a, because we live in a postage stamp. Um, it's really hard. And somebody, you know what? Maybe you need to take a chance on going outside of your comfort zone to meet somebody. Um, that would be amazing. So like, maybe, like, maybe take a trip, maybe go, you know, maybe, maybe decide, maybe extend your search range a little bit. I know maybe you're afraid of going outside of that comfort area because it's what you're used to. Like, you know what you can expect from those guys. Maybe you need to take a chance on something completely different. So that could be, that would be amazing. Maybe you could totally do that. Like if you've got a major metropolitan area near you, or maybe you should just take a trip. <laughs> maybe you should just take a trip somewhere fancy, like to Mexico, where they're all adorable and, you know, tan. <laughs> but anyway, I'm having 
I need to go to sleep now. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, I will talk to you later. Um, I, I have a couple of ideas for some videos and whatnot. It might not be my usual channel fodder, but yeah, I think dudes from another town, um, you know, taking a trip, maybe some different methods of meeting guys. I don't know if like, like, oh, you're sticking like to the online thing, but, um, I find that if you want to meet people like in person is the best, but usually like the older you get, you're going to meet somebody of quality as you go to like things pertaining to the thing that interests you. So, um, taking classes, going to trade shows. I know a lot of people that meet people at like, okay, well, like there's a, like a gem show or something or, um, yeah, online is crap. I know a couple of people that got lucky. Um, but like they got the only two decent guys on online. So, but anyway, all right, you guys. Yeah. If you like bike riding, join a bike riding club. Cause at least then you have that in common right away. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe think about doing some bike riding races. Um, you know, there's all sorts of, there's all sorts of fun stuff you could do. Um, what, 17 years? I don't get that, Jen. Okay. No, no Lycra. Oh my goodness. Why no Lycra? Oh my God. I don't like red Lycra. Uh, okay, now, now that I've said. All right, that's a really horrible pun. And I'm going to sleep now, you guys. All right, good night, you guys.